Oh, well, now that South Carolina is in the rearview mirror, heading right toward us is Michigan, the primary there in just 72 hours. You know, on Tuesday, both Republicans and Democratic voters will head to the polls. But President Biden could be running into a bit of a buzzsaw from Arab and Muslim American voters. You know, a strong support of Israel against the barbaric terrorists of Hamas, well, it has turned out, been hurting him among the Muslim voters. There are about 200,000 in that state, enough to sway the key swing state. Well, squad member Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, well, she's urging her fellow Muslims there not to vote for the president. Right now, we feel completely neglected, neglected and just unseen by our government. If you want us to be louder, then come here and vote uncommitted. With us now is Zudi Jasser, an Arizona Republican congressional candidate in uh, uh, Congressional District 12, that's Tempe uh, and Mesa, by the way. Uh, he's also founder and president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Zudi, welcome. Uh, in your view, how deep and wide is this resistance against the president, against some of the Muslim voting bloc, like we just heard from Rashida Tlaib? Well, Eric, thanks for having me. And uh, let's be clear, these are the loudest, most obnoxious voices in the Arab community and the Muslim community, but they represent an Islamist political movement. They don't represent Present the the majority of Muslims. Certainly, I wish there was more of a of a louder voice from the rational Muslims that have the same kitchen table issues as the rest of us Americans on Biden inflation, Bidenomics, the hemorrhaging border, the national security issue. Uh, but the bottom line is that she speaks for Arab and Muslim communities as much as Hamas speaks for Palestinians, and they're the byproduct. Her and Ilhan Omar are the seeds of racial division. They're really the racists in the room that uh, uh, use every opportunity they can to inflame America, divide America. And they're radicalizing the Democratic Party and exploiting this time of elections to do that. And you know, from Biden on down to Greg Stanton in our own district who's been silent and complicit, never uh, really putting Klaib in her, in her place and allowing this anti-Semitism to foment. Uh, we see the reality that it's the militants, the radicals, the progressivists, aligned with the Islamists, sort of that red-green axis that's driving the Democratic Party because the rational centrists aren't saying anything. Uh, uh, well, Mr. Stanton uh, is not here, and he's uh, welcome to come on, Fox News, of course, to respond to what you just said. But in terms of the issue uh, of the president and how they are swaying, if they are the Muslim community, uh, are people listening to that? Will they be voting uncommitted as she wants them to do in the primary on Tuesday? Well, I have to tell you, I'm, I have a, a number of friends, family, and, and we've been reaching out to communities for, for decades. And I've been one of the lone voices to say that the Islamists don't speak for us, not only not in the Middle East, and especially here, not in America. The Muslim Brotherhood type groups from CARE on are, are really apologists for Islamist movements. They can't even get themselves to call for Hamas to surrender. The vast majority of American Muslims and Syrian Americans, Arab, Iranian Americans really care about economy, ability to feed their kids and bring uh, stability to the economy of their families and also stop the crime that's coming from across the border, the drugs. They want to look at parental rights. They want to talk about fighting against wokeism and really stop the division of race that really this, this type of movement speaks for rather than really the rational center where most Arab Americans and Muslim Americans are. Well, some are obviously li listening to it. Let me, uh, uh, there's an editorial now in the Arab American News in Dearborn, which is a uh, part of the district that urges voters there to vote uncommitted and not vote for the president. And here's an editorial recently in the Arab uh, American News in Dearborn. It says, quote, Biden, who won by narrow margins over his Republican rival, Donald Trump, quickly returned to square one in his political and legis legislative career as a self-declared Zionist. Arab and Muslim Americans are unlikely to back Trump, but could sit out the election and not vote for Biden and other Democrats. That will cause them to lose in Michigan. Do you think that this issue will cause the Democrats or the president to lose in Michigan? Well, and I don't believe so. I think the majority of uh, uh, Arab Muslims do not uh, listen to the radicalism of the Arab news. Uh, that that 
news outlet uh, has been an apologist for many of the dictatorships in the Middle East. And the bottom line is, is most of us who came here to escape the militancy of Islamists, Hamas, and, and dictatorships share the values of the vast majority of Americans that are concerned about the economy, concerned about security, concerned about the border and parental rights and family values and others. And, and the bottom line is, is that they might want to use the Israel issue uh, to divide and, and stoke their anti-Semitism. But at the end of the day, uh, I think uh, uh, it's really more telling about the silence of Biden and others in the Democratic Party to this radicalism rather than really how it's going to affect the vote. Because they're calling for an uncommitted vote. It's not like they're going to ask for them to vote Republican. And mm -hmm. I think ultimately we'll see in the general election that there will be a lot of independents in the Arab Muslim and other communities that are tired of the stoking of racism and, and, and skin deep identity politics rather than rational politics of ideas that are destroying this country. And finally, the president has been increasingly critical of Israel, saying the reaction in Gaza is over the top, uh, sanctioning settlers and the like. You know, some critics say that, you know, people do vote uncommitted. It's like you're actually giving a vote for Hamas. Uh, what do you think of that? And do you think that that is a potential message by not backing the president? This is exactly, Eric, why I've devoted my, my life to, to fighting against political Islam and their worldview. Because at the end of the day, we have a lot of reform we have to do in our communities to talk about what are our priorities and, and, not, and not let the uh, extremists in our community speak for us and, and really stop this gaslighting and deal with the core issues that are American and not be foreign first, be it Palestinian, be it uh, Islamist, but be American first. Yes. Judy Z uh, uh, Zudi Jasser, who is uh, running for Congress uh, in, in the 4th uh, Congressional District in Phoenix, uh, just south of that, and has written a lot about this issue. Zudi, we'll see what happens on Tuesday if uh, what percentage the uncommitted gets in the primary. But we'll be back. Thank you. Fox Thank News. You.